Hey folks, welcome to part two of our fantasy slash RPG AI tutorial. And in the first part, we've taken a look at how to rig up a character to work with the AI. And in this part, we're going to look at the equally important piece, which is making sure that the character knows what is going on in the environment, where it can walk, where it cannot walk, how to make sure it doesn't get stuck, that sort of stuff, uh, which is very, very, very exciting. Okay, so I've taken the liberty of dragging in a couple of art assets from one of our own games. If you've uh, followed us for a while, you know by now that we're uh, taking the war stories of the Bible and turning those into uh, video games. And so this is one of the levels uh, that we're using here, sort of an arena scene. And it consists of a couple of, uh, a couple of pieces. Uh, and I've put the same four characters in the middle. I've not actually touched them. They're the same as we had in the previous tutorial. Now... Let's take a look here. Um, we have a couple of guards and we have a skeleton. So let me take those guards out just for a second and work only with the skeleton. So I'm going to delete those. Actually, and then we have the player here. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the player and tag him as ground because, um, well, I'm going to tell you why I did that in just a second in due time. And we're going to do the same with the uh, skeleton. Then we're going to take the um, ground here and tag it as ground, which I have already done. And then we have to take all these other pieces and tag them as obstacles. Okay, uh, they have mesh colliders on them, uh, which, you know, is a collider that follows the mesh exactly. However, that may not be the best idea in most cases. You want to probably put a box collider around them, but just uh, to keep the tutorial a little short, I'm going to use a mesh collider. It won't have the best results, but whatever. And we're going to mark those as obstacles. So here we have obstacle. We're going to mark that as an obstacle. Where is it? Here we go. And we're going to take these other pieces here and mark them as obstacles as well. OK, perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that our characters know exactly where they can walk and where they cannot walk. So to do that, I'm going to open up our uh, lovely fantasy AI folder uh, that comes with the prefab. And then there's one uh, prefab in there which is called a navigational mesh. And it sounds simple, but it has a lot of magic in it. So I'm going to drag that, drag that in and it's going to look like we're filling up our level with sort of a toxic liquid, if you will. And it says waypoint on there. Now the reason it says waypoint on there, and I'm just checking if everything is scaled correctly, if it's going to fit the the world. The reason it has waypoint on there is because this this um, slab is going to uh, duplicate itself and cut itself into little pieces to make sure we know exactly where we can walk and we where we cannot walk. I'm going to move it down just a little bit. Okay, cool. Now let's take a look at the variables here. Um, it says build navigational mesh. So the next time we run the game, this waypoint uh, mesh is going to subdivide itself. Now we can set at how far it's going to subdivide itself. So I'm going to uncheck these two here at the end. And we have a 1024 resolution of waypoints, which is perfectly fine for a small level as this. Okay. Um, then what else is it going to do is going to recognize the ground as ground, which we have already done. And uh, that's pretty much it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the game view out into the side here so that we can see what's going on in the scene view. Now, this is pretty cool. Watch what happens as soon as I hit play. As you can see, the large waypoint starts to subdivide itself into all kinds of other small waypoints. And then if there's collision with something, it starts to scoop around it, uh, the navigational mesh. And that way, the characters know exactly where to walk, which is pretty cool. Um, now, I'm going to not stop the game yet. I'm going to go over to the hierarchy and select this navigational mesh. Um, and then I'm going to go hit edit and copy. Because this mesh has been generated at runtime, and we all know that if we stop the game in Unity, everything that is created during gameplay gets destroyed. So as soon as I stop the game, you can see all our subdivisions are gone. So I'm going to go to the hierarchy and delete the navigational mesh, and then paste it back in from memory. And boom, here we have it. Brilliant. Now, there's a couple things that we need to look out for here. Um, as you can see, the uh, arena is perfectly sculpted inside, but the uh, navigational waypoint mesh here 
was square. So it generated some meshes that are outside of bounds. Now what I can do is simply select those and delete those. Uh, because you do not want any disconnected waypoints. You don't want any islands because that's not good for the artificial intelligence. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video for a second and remove those waypoints simply by deleting them and selecting them. Um, and then I'll re-continue the video uh, to show you the rest. So now what we're going to do next is uh, actually bake these waypoints. Uh, and you may ask why. Well, if the AI is navigating, it needs to know where it needs to go from one waypoint to the next. So basically every single waypoint in the scene will need to know how far the other waypoints are f that it's relative to. And that is uh, starts to create sort of a spider grid of where the character can actually walk, which is really, really cool. So what I'm going to do is going to go back to our navigational mesh here and collapse it. And what I'm going to do is I come over here to the side and instead of build navigational mesh, because we've already done that, I'm going to select bake waypoints off of the meshes that we have. So now I'm going to hit play again and now it will take some time to actually build the uh, uh, waypoint spider web, which may take a second. So I'm going to hit play here and watch this happen as uh, Spider-Man sort of creates itself and the bake is complete. Now, uh, this is very cool because uh, you only have to do this once. So now all the waypoints know about each other. And so we have to do our same trick again. I'm going to hit escape to show my mouse, go into the hierarchy, uh, click the navigational mesh, edit, copy, stop the game basically lose everything we just did but it's still in memory so I'm going to delete the navigational mesh and then paste it back in boom there you have it now you can't really see the waypoints in the scene right now but trust me they are there I'm going to make the scene view a little bit bigger here and then the game view I'm gonna give that a little more room so that you can see exactly what happens as I play the game so on the left in the scene you will see that the skeleton will start to draw lines towards waypoints as it follows me around. And here in the game view, where all the waypoints are hidden, of course, because it's a game, you will see that he will start to follow me perfectly. So let me hit play here. And the skeleton is coming for me, and I'm going to try and hide behind these blocks, or at least move around them. So he's coming for me. I'm hiding behind the block, and he walks around it perfectly without you know trying to run into it or getting stuck in any corners that sort of deal he always knows where to go because of the waypoints so uh, that is very handy but not only just for following the player I could give the skeleton the command to walk over a, a super huge terrain and it will uh, follow a path just fine with all the waypoints uh, so very very flexible system and I talked with the guys at Brilliant Game Studios and they've given us a discount code so if you put in Tornado Twins on your checkout at GamePrefabs.com you get a, um, a temporary uh, discount which is only valid this week uh, so take your chance and go for it uh, while you can. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to be just as excited about it as I am. Talk to you later. Bye bye.